Good afternoon and welcome to our Thursday's edition of our 4-H agronomy series. Uh, this is our Tasty Thursday and with me today is Anya Johnson. So Anya, take it away. All right, well thank you everyone for being with us today for our Tasty Thursday edition of the agronomy series. Uh, like Brian said, my name is Anya Johnson. I'm a local extension educator with Dakota County 4-H working with the 4-H Youth Development Program and a member of the state agronomy team. Here in 4-H, we empower youth with the skills to lead for a lifetime through research-backed, fun, hands-on activities in areas like science, health, agriculture, and civic engagement, all with the support of caring adult mentor. In Minnesota, 4-H is brought to you by the University of Minnesota Extension. Today we'll be learning about fruits and vegetables. What part of the plants do we eat? Roots, stems, fruits, leaves, seeds, flowers. We're going to explore the differences in the fruits and vegetables and at the end we'll be creating a healthy snack with some of the fruit and vegetables that we are learning about today. As a reminder we are also recording the Zoom to be shared with others after the presentation. As you can see behind me, I have some helpers today, Owen and Sierra, who will help us learn about fruits and vegetables. All right, I would like to invite you to put your name and county. If you are joining from another state, put that in the chat as a fun way to do a roll call and find out who is joining us today. There will be another 4-H agronomy member checking the chat and welcome you to our time today. It's great to see all of you have joined us from our homes. Uh, just one last reminder to put your questions in the chat so that um, we can collect your questions and someone will answer them at some point during our day time today. At 4-H meetings and other 4-H opportunities, we'd like to start with the 4-H pledge. The pledge is a great way to unite all of us in 4-H youth development. Its meaning is true today as it is when we was first created. I'm going to ask my helpers to lead us in the 4-H pledge. I would also share a slide to help you with the pledge. You are joining, um, if you're joining from another state, you'll notice that Minnesota has added a part. So we'll talk about that in just a moment. All right. My, my head to clear thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, my health to better living, for my family, my club, my community, my country, my world. If you're from another state, you'll notice a difference in the pledge. In Minnesota, we have added for my family because my club indicated that we are also pledging ourselves to our family and acknowledging family as an important piece of our society. Thanks for joining us today. I'd like to take a minute to share some fun facts with you about plants that we eat. So if you, and uh, while I'm sharing these facts, if you don't already have your supplies in front of you, this is a great time to get those supplies. So tomatoes are a fruit. They are the most popular fruit in the world. In the 1890s, tomatoes were considered a vegetable because the US Supreme Court named them as vegetables for tax reasons. The next question I have, and you should put in the chat, what is the, First vegetable to be grown in space in October of 1995. Cucumbers, carrots, potatoes, or onions? Oh, look at the. We're getting a lot of guesses in the chat. Awesome. What's the number one response coming through the chat? It looks like maybe potatoes. Potatoes is right. Those are all great guesses but those that pick potatoes is right all right so now 
is there someone out there could, that can tell us how to tell if cranberries are ripe? Oh, there's a lot of guesses going on. Oh, and what, do you, what, do you, what is one sign? Looks like by the color, by their size. They bounce. Ooh, they bounce. Oh, yeah. they bounce. Yeah, they bounce. They bounce all over. So is there any fun facts out there that anyone would like to share with the audience? If so, put it right in the chat for our team. All right, so I know um, it looks like one of them out here is talking about um, rhubarb and um, the freeze that you aren't supposed to freeze rhubarb. That's a good one. How about Brian? Is there any other ones that you see up there? Yeah, there's a lot of different ones coming up in the all sorts of facts, fun facts here. One is wondering if carrots are really good for your eyes or not. Awesome. Well, that's great, you guys. Well, we're going to move on and learn about the plant parts. Um, and as we move on, I encourage you to look at those chats and um, see some of those fun responses of some neat facts. So, um, fruits. So, um, we have cucumbers, um, tomatoes. You may not have realized that those are all fruits. Um, pumpkins, olives, avocados are all parts of a fruit. We think of them as a vegetable because of how we eat them. They're savory instead of sweet. Like most things we call fruit are usually sweet, but these are actually a fruit. So my next one is how, what do you guys think that peas or corn are? How many of you have, how many of you have some out there? I bet there's a bunch of you that have some peas or corn to show us today. Looks so like what, there's some. Awesome. What part do we eat when we're eating them? Awesome, I'm seeing great answers. For those of you that said seeds, you're right, they're seed. All right, how about lettuce? I bet some of you guys have some lettuce out there. So lettuce, I bet this one is a pretty easy one. Lettuce or spinach, those are considered leaves. So when we eat spinach or lettuce, we are eating the plant's leaves. How about, um, how about celery? Do you know what this is? What, what area does this fall into? Is anyone saying anything in the chat, Brian? We've got a few guesses. Yes, yeah, some are saying vegetables. All right. Anyone saying what part of the, what part of the plant the celery is coming from? Um, some are saying the stock or the top, but again, right. more guesses on that. All right. Well, it is the stem of the plant. So great guesses, guys. So let's look at the next one. So I bet there's some of you out there that has some carrots or potatoes. These are one of my favorites. But there's other ones too. So how about radishes? What, any ideas on what part this might be? If you do, put it in the chat. I see a lot of guesses around the rut. Um, guess, look at those answers. Claire, um, Brian, we have some fruit and vegetable experts out there. So yes, you guys are right. These are the root of the plant. All 
All right, so um, as a reminder to recap on the parts of the plant that we have um, talked about today, you have the flower of the plant, which is your um, fruits, your, um, oh, the fruit of the plant. So you have your tomatoes, your apples, you have the seed of your plant, um, one seed that comes to my mind that, that I have recently learned is that peanut butter is considered a seed. Um, you have your leaves, so you have your spinach, your lettuce, you have the root, or sorry, your stem, the celery, you have your roots, which are like your um, potatoes and carrots and radishes. Is there any questions that have come up? All right, well, let's move on. We got some other really fun um, facts to share with you today. All right, how about an onion? Anyone know what's special about an onion compared to some of the other plants we've looked at today? They have multiple edible parts that we can eat. So this is just one example, but we can eat the roots of the onion, but we can also eat the stems for a little milder taste. And for a beet plant, if you enjoy beets, the root of the beet plant is what people typically eat, but their leaves are also really good in salads when the leaves are really young and tender. And when the leaves are bigger, they're really good when they're cooked. So all the fruits and vegetables we looked at, uh, so of all the fruits and vegetables we looked at today, does anyone have any guesses to which one has poisonous parts? if we are eating the wrong thing. Any guesses out there, Brian? Yeah, a uh, beet. There'd be any poisonous issues of beets? Ooh. You know, I'm not, I'm not a beet expert, but I am not sure that there's poisonous parts of a beet. Um, I, some parts might not be as yummy to eat. Um, but I think the beet, you could probably eat all the pieces. Well, let's, any others? What about rhubarb? That one came up in the chat too. Yeah, so rhubarb is one of those um, that would be, can, there's parts of it that are considered poisonous. So their leaves can be poisonous. And if they, if you improperly um, um, get, uh, for, um, get them ready to eat. So if you freeze them, which is a new one to me, that if you freeze rhubarb, there can be, um, it can become poisonous. Um, and also you don't want leaves. I know, um, we have, um, some rhubarb in our backyard and we have to be careful if we take the uh, rhubarb that we don't put it out in the pasture so that the cattle don't eat the rhubarb or we could be in trouble there could be some animals that get sick from that um how about tomatoes did anyone in the chat say tomatoes there were a couple of tomato guesses awesome so tomatoes are one of those plants that we wouldn't want to eat all the parts. So that is kind of cool. That's something that I didn't really know. I knew about rhubarb, but not tomatoes. So um, the leaves of tomato paint plants are what's actually poisonous. In fact, for many years, people would even eat tomato, wouldn't even eat tomatoes because they thought the entire plant was poisonous. We now know that the fruit of the tomato plant has vitamins and are very good for us. All right, we are gonna go move on to making our snack. Today we are oh, hold on.
Today, we are going to make ants on a log. First, you take your celery, and if it isn't already cut, cut it into bite-sized pieces. Maybe ask for a parent to help you with this process. After you've done that, you take a plastic knife and take your cream cheese, peanut butter, ranch dressing, etc., and dip your plastic knife in it. Spread it in the middle of which you are using. And then after you do that, you take raisins. And you stick them on the top of it and then you eat. <laughs> so can can you tell us what what the celery is? What 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 parts of the plant are we eating here today? The stem. The stem. And what about the peanut butter? Peanut butter seed. And what about the raisins? What are they? Fruit. They are fruit. Good job. Well, thank you for that. So. Um, as you, um, are eating that yummy snack, we are going to share a few things. Brian, how is that chat looking? Yeah, it looks like a lot of people are trying their snacks and, uh, enjoying Owen there as he was spreading the peanut butter on his, uh, on a celery, so a lot of people are doing the same thing, it looked like. Nummy. Awesome. Well, hold on one moment. For some reason during that, I lost, I lost that presentation. Just one second. We will grab that back up. Sorry for this delay here, everybody. I apologize for this technical difficulty. We were way too into Owen making a snack. All right. Is that coming up on your end? Not yet. Let's see. Now is it? There, we're back. All right. Let's move on. So the next thing that we're going to talk about here while you're still enjoying that yummy snack is we're going to talk about some different projects or opportunities um, that Anya, you could do you within know, the. Anya can see your script. Oh, you can? pencil here. All right, can you see that screen? Not yet. What? Oh boy, hold on. Should we stop and try again? Um, one moment. <laughs> 
let me just try sharing this one more time. I apologize everyone for this technical difficulty. I'm not sure what's happening here. Um, does that show up? Yep. And you're still seeing it. Yep. Yep, oh, I'm seeing the full slide. With the notes. Are you Not seeing the notes. the notes too, Brian? The notes All are right. now. All right. I didn't think that you guys all wanted to see those notes in that presentation. So thank you very much for your patience and bearing with us here through that technical difficulty, but I think it looks like we're back on track. So I wanted to share a little bit with you about our agronomy kits that Minnesota 4-H is currently offering. Um, if you haven't heard um, about them before and you're curious to learn more about fruits and vegetables or anything for that matter in agronomy, it uh, suggests that you check these kits out. So there are a couple different kits that we currently offer. So we offer a crop science, a corn kit, where you will learn how to grow field corn, sweet corn, popcorn, right on your porch. Um, grow soybeans. Um, there's a soybean kit so you could go grow even soybeans on your porch. Or forages, learn about the exciting world of forages grasses and forages that are used to help feed animals every day. So you get to explore them and the root system that makes our plants grow. Potatoes, you can learn about growing potatoes um, from the eye to full growing potatoes that are ready to eat. And plant and soil science looks on how plants grow up using their root viewer and vegetable gardening, learn how to nurture your container gardens from planting and seed germination through harvest. You could plant your own herb garden and watch it grow. So all these kits, you can grow them anywhere you live. And um, there's a support guide that goes with each kit to walk you through that process. So if you don't know about these kits, if this is the first time you're hearing about them, I highly recommend that you check in with your local extension educator in your county for more information. And another opportunity that I would like to share with you today are some ideas about your county fair projects. So if you liked what you saw today, there are some ideas or thoughts that I recommend um, if you, so some guidelines for fruit, three of the same type of specimen or fruit on a plate for herbs, dried, fresh, cut, or potted. For potatoes, between, you could have six to 10 potatoes in a box. Um, this is a brand, this, these numbers have changed this year um, and those will be in your premium book. Uh, or a hill of potatoes, uh, the plant of the potatoes attached and that is something new. So a hill of potato, that would be kind of cool too. So vegetable, a plate of one large cabbage, melon, squash, pumpkin, or three medium on a plate, tomatoes, potatoes, onions, or six to 12 small on a plate, green beans, peas, cherry tomatoes, or lima beans. Vegetable box, one large, three medium, two small, six to 12 of each of them. So those are just some thoughts for you um, as you're looking at uh, your 4-H projects for the fair this year. Um, one thing that is currently happening at my house is that our kids started popcorn. They took popcorn seeds from um, the pantry and put them in a plastic baggie in a pa wet paper towel for about a week, watch them sprout and grow. And now they have repotted them and they are growing like weeds. So just a fun alternative um, way of starting out your plants. So you could do a variety of testing and opportunities with something like that. So I encourage like when you're looking at your fair project or even utilizing those, uh, agronomy kits 
to be creative. Like just because it says it to do it one way, like you could start them in a baggie or start them in different soil types. Um, just have some fun with it and use it as a time to learn and educate others. All right, well, that ends it for today. So thanks again um, for attending Tastefully Tasty Thursday. I hope you learned something today. So I will be putting up a poll here at the end for you to share what you learned with us. We also have this record, this session recorded and will be posted soon. So parents, if you enjoyed today's activities, sign up and receive the latest 4-H news at, um, if you Google Minnesota 4-H, you will get additional information about joining. So please share with your friends about this posting. I would like to also encourage you that if you enjoyed today, I would like you to share and tell others that next Wednesday we have Worm Wednesday. So this is another offering that our uh, 4-H agronomy team will be offering this coming Wednesday, April 29th at 2 p.m. And, and um, myself and the rest of the agronomy will stay on for a few minutes um, to answer your questions. But at this point, we have completed the, um, the program for today. Thank so you, Anya. There, lots of uh, thank yous in the chats as people are leaving. Lots of uh, thank you for sharing today. So that, that's uh, great to see. All right. Well, as you guys go off, Thank you again, and make sure that you fill out the evaluation for us so we can continue to offer some valuable programming for you.